Hi, I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Thank you for tuning in today. Today we're going to be exploring um, ceramics, and um, we're going to be talking to George Davison, who is a ceramic artist and a teacher. And um, he's been doing ceramics since he started doing Play-Doh when he was a little boy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, hi, George. Hi, it's Thank a pleasure you. to be here. Well, thanks for coming. Um, so why don't we just jump into that Play-Doh thing. Did you really start with Play-Doh? Yeah. Uh, my mom used to make it mm -hmm. out of starch and flour and food coloring. and used to do all kinds of crazy things with it. And it morphed into clay when I was in high school, and I fell in love with the material, and I still work with it now for the last probably 40 years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so high school, college, and grad school were all... It all just blended together. Ceramics. I went right through. Uh-huh. All ceramics. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned that um, you're one of six, you have six, five siblings, and all but one is an artist? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my brother Tom is a... He's a steel contractor, uh -huh. and then the rest are painters. Really? My brother Chuck is a painter, my sister is a painter. She does plein air, uh, impressionist style paintings. Chuck does, actually our work is a little similar. He is does, it? he lives out in Phoenix, and very Native American inspired, um, lots of desert colors and things. Yeah, why don't we talk a minute about your um, shadow spirits um, mm -hmm. collection that you've been working sure. on. Sure, yeah. Um, the pieces on the wall are included in that, in that grouping and um, they started out as as part of another piece of sculpture. They're relief and they hang on the wall and um, they're very, they're human forms and I, I like to connect with the spirituality of the form. Um, they're kind of, they're not androgynous but they're, they're human, they're, they don't have a gender. Mm -hmm. And I try to describe what they are and who they are with language. Uh, this piece here is, is, is an example from that series. And you can see um, it's entitled Benevolence. And then there's type. And there's, I use a lot of stamps on the pieces themselves. And this one has a crown and she's got pearls embedded in the top. So I use a lot of uh, other materials to embellish the pieces. Yeah. And, and um, how, do you, how do you create that shape? Uh, the shape itself, is, it's almost like a blank. I, I rough it out in clay and um, I let it firm up and then I build a, a plaster mold around it. So it takes a few days to dry. Yeah. But once you've got the mold, you've got the beginnings of all these many different uh, shapes. And um, it's like a blank and uh, you can... So you create the mold, you build the mold yourself. Oh yes, yeah. 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 I make a lot of things with molds. A lot of these have, these have little cast twigs. Um, some of the pieces behind us have uh, bones that are hanging from them. And those are made from chicken bones that are embedded into the clay. Really? They're press molds. Yeah. I don't yeah. do anything technical. I, I like to make things very quick and, you know, to the point. Right. But then... You, you take the basic mold and you embellish and you change it and add and subtract. Right, it, 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 starts, like. to, it starts to define itself. Um, I often start out with a whole series of words. I'll choose a word and then think about the word and, and what that connotates and how I can reinforce some of the values of that word, whether uh, some of them were eternity, power of prayer, peace, they're benevolent. I try to keep them, uh, you know, they're, they're about goodness and happy things. Yeah, I, yeah. So we need very that in the positive. world. Right. Yeah, we certainly do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they come in all different sizes, too. It looks like you have smaller ones and larger ones. And yeah, and the beauty of the mold is the pieces in the back, I just basically fill the mold part of the way. And, and the beauty of that is you can work pretty rapidly. The, mold, the pieces dry in the mold, and then you pop them out. And then that's when I embed things into them. I, read, I write the language. I use, I use lots of different stamps. I collect stamps. Uh -huh. I have some really cool indigo stamps that are made out of hardwood. Um, I like the commercial ones, though, too. Do you? Yeah. You know, I have ones that say bliss and peace and all kinds of things. Yeah. So there are, if you look at this one, there are some little kind of hidden messages in the top. It says love, peace, love. 
there's always something that goes hand in hand with the, the quality of the writing. It just seems to me that would be a wonderful thing to give somebody a, for a gift for their house or, or to have in your house. Yeah, and, and, you know, kind that's, of. That's, that's a great idea. I, I think so many things. Um, we have lots of little statuaries and things. Um, Infinite of Prague. Yeah. You know, I was raised yeah. Catholic, so we always had these little figures all over. And I'm sure <laughs> that got in, into my soul. So. Yeah, I was raised Catholic too, that's yeah. why I'm laughing. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely, um, they're, they're a presence. Yeah. And I've had yes. a lot of people say that. And it's a nice, it's a great feeling when people respond to things in, in a spiritual way. You know, I don't think of them as religious figures. They're just yeah. very spiritual to me. Mm -hmm. And they mm. also, you also make them in freestanding Figures? Yeah, they actually started out as pre, uh, uh, freestanding figures. Um, I started doing figurative pieces in probably the early 2000s. Um, they were larger, raku-fired pieces. And also I, I included, um, some of the pieces are actually standing on large throne jars that I made. So the figures actually were attached to the lids. Oh, okay, yeah. Almost yeah. like funerary vases yes, and yes. things like that. Yes, yes. Um, I look at a lot of that kind of thing. I love Haniwa figures, which are Japanese figures. Uh -huh. They're Japanese funerary figures. So if you look at art historical things from all over the world, there are so many human forms. And a lot of them are very abstract. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not as interested in sculpting like Michelangelo. I'm not, not that I wouldn't want to be as good as he was, but right. they're, they're, you know, I, they don't need eyes, they don't need a face. I would rather define what they're about using objects. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm kind of fascinated by the idea of trinkets and beads and, and how people sort of bartered with them and how you can create something and give it value. You know, why is a piece of shiny metal that's gold so much more valuable than a, a piece of bone that's carved yeah. or, um, you know, in our culture, the almighty dollar right. rules. And, and it's kind of funny because sometimes I'll just look at a dollar and, and think it's a piece of paper, but it has so much uh, imagery on it and, and symbolism. It does. Yeah. It does. So. It does. Um, tell me a little bit about the throne pieces, because that seems like this is what I first saw of your work mm -hmm. that, that you had done, and, and the, um, the, uh, the spirit work was a real re revelation to me, and it was just something totally different from what I had seen. So um, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about this throne work okay. that's here on the table. These are uh, very straightforward functional pieces. This is a, a brush caddy. And um, I, I think I have a great deal of respect to, for people who make functional things because I think when you make an object that's functional and aesthetically pleasing at the same time, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, that's not as easy to do. Uh, and so this is a brush caddy. And then this is a, uh, an Asian style tea bowl. Um, sooner or later, you know, when, you're, when you work in ceramics, sooner or later you have to come to grips with with its history, and its history is about function. And um, that's something that I kind of, I was a little bit reluctant to, to go into that part of ceramics. But as a teacher, you really have to know that. Yeah. So I, I taught myself basically how to throw, which is use the potter's wheel. And um, what's really quite fascinating about the potter's wheel is it's a production device. So you can make pieces very, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was wonderful because sitting and hand building a piece can take sometimes many, many hours or sometimes weeks. You can sit on a potter's wheel if you're proficient and make 30 pieces in half an hour. Oh, can you really? Yeah. And, and then what you can do with that is, uh, since I'm a builder, I will take those and cut them and build with them. So for me, throwing sometimes, it's like milling the lumber. Uh, so th then you can see how I incorporate them more sculpturally in these forms. These are from a series I call T-scapes. Um, and it's just the idea of, uh, of, a, of a bowl uh, being reintroduced into, into nature. Mm -hmm. So 
I just did a whole series of those. I did those for probably five years. And, and this is more like a maquette, which is a model. Uh -huh. I have some of those that are, you know, about this big. So it's, it's kind of funny. It, it, when you, I can see it, you, you would think I'd be almost, uh, who is this person? And wow, they do this and they do that. Well, yeah, it just, it just yeah. seems so different. Yeah, they from, are severely you know, a different. A lot of the pots that I see. Yeah, uh, and, and these are very much a new direction for me. Um, they have roots in a lot of the older work that yeah. I've done, but um, it's refreshing to go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't like to just focus on one thing for too long. Yeah, it keeps or, you from getting stale. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll, I always have multiple pieces going. And then I also like the pieces that are behind us. They have uh, so many parts and pieces, and they become, they're sort of toy like. And yeah. They can be a yeah. lot of fun to just play with mm -hmm. and see how they swing and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so you just had a very successful s show at the Gallery 66 in yeah, Cold Spring. That was really exciting. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a um, very different experience for me because I had been asked to do a show and I only had five weeks to prepare. So that's why um, I came up with using the mold oh, really? so that I could make pieces more rapidly. And what was great is when you when you're given a time frame, you um, you, you, you're forced to do things that you normally wouldn't do. So since I couldn't really glaze and fire everything in a timely way, it forced me to you know, explore different avenues. And, and I started using these patinas and paints. And, and for me, that was incredibly re refreshing because sometimes glazing and firing, it can be very tedious. Yeah. And, and so this was real direct. And so, it's, yeah. it's very satisfying to be able to paint something and go, okay, <laughs> instead of have to go through the whole process of firing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the pressure and the stress was good for your uh, process, it, it sounds it like. It came at a great time because I had just come off of doing this kind of uh, wood firing, and I wasn't sure really what I wanted to do next. Um, it was real timely. Yeah. And now it just opened up a lot of different doors for me. And, and Cold Spring is such a beautiful town, and they get so many visitors, and it's they a do. great place for artists. It is, yeah, yeah it is. I've it's always good. loved it. It's a good location to mm -hmm. be at, yeah. So um, is there any place that people could see your, your work right now? Uh, not right at the moment. Um, I just did a few, I just did a show at Arts on the Lake in Carmel. We had our annual members show. We do one in the spring and then the fall. Um, we have the upcoming Art East tour in yeah, October. In October, I'll be part of that, um, and I think we have almost forty artists involved. We have or? about forty artists who who yeah. will be involved. Um, That's a great some at their own studios and a, a couple in you know uh, more of a group setting. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed being part of that. It yeah. was exciting. It is because you know when you're working in a studio space, you feel like you're in a bit of a void at times. Mm -hmm. So people coming into your world. They notice things that you don't. Yeah. Um, they have, a lot of people are very frank about things and it's kind of refreshing to hear yeah. what they have to say. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, um, I know you don't have a, a dedicated website, but you do have mm -hmm. a web page on the Artie Duchess website yes. mm -hmm. where people could see. Absolutely. And, and uh, that will be updated real soon. Mm -hmm. So, George. Oh, thank you so much. Our it's time is up. I'm glad that uh, you could make it tonight and that. Um, you know, we'll be seeing you for Artie's. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome.